This is episode three. I don't want to ramble too much. I really want to get right into this. I can't believe I'm actually talking about this, to be honest, because I never thought I would. So basically, as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be talking about my NICU babies. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to title this video yet. So before we get into this, guys, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And don't forget to turn on your post notifications. Basically, what that does is every time we upload, you guys will get a notification. So let's get right into it. I never thought that I would actually talk about this and only because I buried it so deep. So, so deep that I didn't even think about it. You guys know that I have an eight-year-old. Well, I have a soon-to-be eight-year-old and I have a two-year-old. Madison just turned two and they both were in the NICU. When Zara was born, I was still young. So I didn't really realize what I was going through. And the reason why I'm actually talking about this now and the reason I dug it back up was because one of my homegirls posted up a photo. I'm not sure if it was in her story, her Instagram story. If she still has the picture, if I can find the picture, I'll leave it right here. And she had a shirt or a sweater that said, I think it was a shirt that said, Dear Nick, you mama. And just seeing that alone took me back. I broke down into tears and I'm like, what in the world? Where, these, where did these tears come from? Just seeing that picture, reading her post or whatever words she shared, I don't really remember, but I just know how it made me feel. And I was just like, wow. So I hit her up and I'm like, wow, looking at this brought back so much. And I buried this so deep, so, so, so deep that I actually forgot about it. And I buried it because during those times with Zara and with AV, it was just like, I'm just happy that my babies are alive. So whatever I'm feeling, whatever it is, what it is, it'll go away. You know what I mean? I basically just pushed it away. I just buried it. I, I didn't, I didn't focus on it. You know what I mean? Because I was just so happy that my babies were alive, that I was alive, that I was healthy and they were healthy and stuff like that. You know, it was... It was just a few complications, but they were alive and that's what mattered to me. So the way I felt was just like, whatever, it was like irrelevant to me. It's so weird. I just buried it and buried it and buried it until I didn't think about it anymore. So I'm going to talk about both babies and I'm going to start off with Zara, of course. And because this was almost eight years ago, I had told my homegirl that I was going to do a video about this. And when I did, I was actually looking for photos of Zara in the NICU. I couldn't find any. And I know I took photos. I just don't know where they are. And then this is like almost eight years ago. So I don't, I really don't know where they are. So I'm just like, oh, okay. But of course, you never forget that feeling. You never forget how you feel. You know what I'm saying? How something made you feel. Someone made you feel, right? First of all, as soon as I pushed Zara out, I didn't even see what she looked like. They didn't hand her to me. She had to be rushed to the NICU. And that was just after like a few seconds of her, like once they took her out, she was crying, but it was like a, a cry and then she would stop. A cry and then she would stop, like she couldn't breathe. And at that moment also I caught a fever. So they just like, okay, mama, you, you know, you have to, we have to take her into the NICU. So I didn't get to hold my baby. I didn't get to hold her and a new mom, you know what I'm saying? I just gave birth and on top of having to worry about, you know, stitches or whatever's going on down there, I had to, you know, watch them take her. I watched, and I will never forget this, you know, I watched them take her. All I could think was, in my mind, I didn't even say it out loud, all I could think was like, what in the world is going on? Like, is she okay? You know, I didn't even get to say the words. I just want my baby, you know? So the nurse was just like, she's okay, don't worry. 
we're gonna take her to the NICU, whatever she was telling me. So of course, you know, I had to wait for them to finish everything. All I kept telling Shalit was like, okay, they need to hurry up. Like, I wanna go see her. You know, and then finally, because they have to do what they have to do, so it's not like I could just get up and just go see her. No, they have to, they tell you, you know, like, okay, you can go see the baby now. The nurse was like, you can go see your baby now. So first of all, I don't know what she looked like. <laughs> there was no pictures taken. <laughs> but once I walked into the NICU, I see all these babies and I'm looking. <laughs> I don't know what she looks like. I'm looking and I'm looking and I just like right in like right in front of me <laughs> was this baby that looked exactly like Sheik. And I'm like, that's her, that's my baby. So I woke up to her and I can't remember if she had a tube. It was something there. I just can't remember what it was. But again, she couldn't breathe on her own, so they had to monitor her. I was just so happy to see her that I really don't remember exactly what was going on um but i just all i saw was her and i was just so happy and then the nurse tells me like give me like five more minutes mommy and then you can pick her up and i was just like okay and just that feeling alone once you see your baby the only thing you're thinking is just like i want to pick you up i want to grab you i want to touch you feel you i want to smell you and i couldn't do that that hurt it so i remember the nurse coming to me and the nurse was just like mommy are you gonna breastfeed and i'm like yeah I couldn't put her on my breast because of, you know, what was going on. They was monitoring her and the nurse was like, you can't put her on your breast right now, but maybe tomorrow or the next day you'll be able to put her on your breast. And I'm just like, I was devastated. So now what? I didn't know too much about pumping. I wasn't thinking about that. All I was thinking about was just putting her on my breast. Like, I didn't think about Similac. I didn't think about any of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So the nurse was just like, this is just for now. Don't worry, everything is going to be okay. So all of this was just, it was just too much for me. Then they were telling me that she would have to stay there at least for two or three days because they had to monitor her and then on top of that she had jaundice which is basically like yellow of the skin so they had her under this light so just imagine how i felt and i know that there's so many moms out there that go through this there's no thought about the NICU when you're pregnant you're not thinking oh once i give birth there's a possible chance that the baby is gonna go into the NICU you're not thinking about that you know because you're thinking all these positive thoughts right that wasn't the plan once that happens it's like what do I do? I felt so defeated. I felt so hurt and so broken. Having to go home without my baby. It's so crazy how I buried that, you know what I mean? And I know that that played a big, big role in my postpartum depression. I know it did. My postpartum depression with Zara was just so bad. It was so bad and I feel like it lasted a long time. But you know, I got through it and I thank God for that because that was such a hard time for me, you know, just being back and forth at the hospital. Even though it was just a small amount of days, it doesn't matter. It really does not matter. Like, how is it that you have a baby and you have to go home without your baby? You know what I mean? And just all those things, it was just, it was way too much for me. Seeing her in the incubator, under a light, and the, it was just <sighs> not being able to touch her when I want to touch her. It was terrible, you know? And you don't really hear people speaking about that. Like, of course, you'll go on Google right now, or NICU moms, or NICU babies, and you can Google stuff like that because, of course, there are people out there that go through this, no ifs or buts about it, but... It's not a lot of people that talk about it, you know? And look at me, I buried this so deep. I buried my feelings because I was just so thankful that my babies were alive that I just didn't want to complain. I didn't care to complain about anything else. And I totally just disregarded my feelings about it. And I was mentally so broken. I never really expressed that to she. I never expressed that to anybody for that matter. Not my mom, nobody. I was just being a mom you know i was just doing what i had to do i was just making sure i was at the hospital when those doors open and that's it you know doing what i have to do and then the day came that we was able to take her home and it was just like i really just buried everything because i'm just like i don't even care about how i felt i'm just happy we were able to take her home and that's it you know and then taking her home was another thing i was watching her sleep i didn't sleep i was scared of the sudden infant death it was just so oh my god I was literally watching over her for like three days straight, just making sure my baby didn't die. It was hard. It was so hard. Now let's get into baby number two. So now see with Madison is so recent and it's so brand new. Two years ago, it was like yesterday, honestly. The feelings are still so fresh. It's like it happened yesterday and oh man. And especially that it was happening for the second time, it just opened up old wounds and because I never really healed from the first time, 
the second time hit me 10 times harder 10 times harder i was oh man it was bad and then to think that i buried that too never spoke about it I didn't speak to sheik about it I didn't speak to nobody about it i just buried it because i was just so happy to bring my baby home so when i gave birth to matheson we actually have a video we was able to record that see with, with zara we wasn't recording back then so we don't really have any of that but with matheson we was able to film i wish we was able to film me pushing her out but if you watch the video you guys see why we didn't get to record that part this is the video right here you guys can go watch it and you guys will see that i was able to hold her i was able to put her on my breast i was able to do some things that i wasn't able to do with zara that felt really good i think we was able to actually chill for the first day i think it's the second day that they had to take some blood and when they took some blood they said give us a few hours and we'll come back with the results blah 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 they came back and they were just like um the baby has jaundice you know the baby's skin is really yellow we're probably gonna have to put her under a light and when they said that i was just like no i was oh my goodness i was devastated devastated guys but the nurse was also like we don't have to put her under right now because if it stays at this level it could drop down or it could get worse so she was like we're gonna check her again in a few hours <clears throat> i wish i would have took a picture of her foot on her heel it was so many dots from them poking her i was going nuts okay i was going crazy but they had to get her blood and every time they had to check to see if the uh, jaundice was going up or down they had to keep poking her to get her blood so oh my goodness i was uh, they checked her blood again came back and they was just like it's going up we have to put her under the light so i'm gonna leave a picture right here and in this picture you guys can see that she had the things over her eyes and she was just laying there and me seeing my baby like that i was I just kept crying and I couldn't stop crying. All I can think about, what is she feeling? And then the nurse was telling me like, mommy, she's good. She's still a baby, it's different if she was bigger. And all I can think about, what if her eyes are open? I was so hurt. All I kept thinking was like, why me? Why my baby, you know? So seeing her like that for so many hours, it hurt me and i didn't really feel it until they were just like okay mommy you have to you have to go home you can't stay in the room anymore they were actually so nice that they let me stay an extra day because they had her in the room i was there for three days usually it's just two days and then you get to go home with your baby the nurse was telling me like look you can stay another night the only thing is we won't be able to give you like breakfast lunch and dinner you're gonna have to get it yourself we're not supposed to allow you to stay in here but we are gonna let you and you know hopefully the baby will be able to go home the next next day long story short she wasn't able to come home the next day and i had to leave and because i was going hard with pumping i had her on my breast but then after a while she wasn't latching anymore and i was going so hard with pumping that i was getting milk out so it was just like okay so she's gonna be here and i can't stay here so how am i gonna give her her milk and the nurse was just like when you get home just pump a lot and then come back and bring the milk she said we also have a nursing room where you could go in and you can pump and then you know you could spend the day here and just come back and forth and i remember <laughs> and i'm gonna also leave a picture right here this was the first day that i had to leave her and she took a picture of me i didn't even know he took this picture of me i looked crazy i was crying so much and i was just I was over it. I was over everything. She caught me looking crazy, but that feeling right there. So now check this out. So that I was able to stay the first night, but then the second night I wasn't able to stay. And the second day came and I had to go. So I went home, I changed my clothes. I came back and you know, brought her milk and I hung out with her for a little bit, watched her under the light. I was just so sad, blah, blah, blah. The nurses told me like, she's doing much better. You can take her home. The nurses is like, her levels are fine. You may be able to take her home today and blah, blah, blah. So I was just like, oh, my goodness thank god i was just so happy so we did just that we were just so excited to bring her home it was just so much joy in the house everybody was just so happy to have her home oh, she was able to meet zara it was just ugh, it was just a great feeling you know later that night i was looking at her skin and her skin looked so yellow to me it's supposed to look better and it looks like it's getting worse so i ended up taking her to the er they had to poke her again in her poor foot i'll show you guys these pictures right here we was in the er sitting on the er bed I took a picture of her little feet and they was just like her levels were back up and it's high i think it was supposed to be like at 12 or 13 around there and it was like almost at like a 20 so they had to put her back in the NICU i didn't know what to do with myself i can't even explain to y'all how i felt i think about all the moms that had a pandemic baby that had to do this during covid 
look how I felt pre-COVID. Nobody ever speaks about how they really feel. I buried it for so many years and I just see a picture and here goes those feelings. Feeling of just drowning. What do I do? I just thank God. I thank God that he got me through those times because yo, that is hard. It's not really until it hits home that you feel it. You know what I mean? Because I've had family and friends that had NICU babies, but they never really spoke about it. I never knew how they felt about it, you know? It was just like, oh, the baby was in the NICU for a few days, so I had, you know, I'm gonna go pick her up or pick him up now. It's just like, oh, okay, you know, I pray all is well, and you and baby are doing good, but that's it. Nobody talks about how mommy or daddy feels. That mentally destroyed me for a while. Although I buried it, I buried it, it was still, it's something that I never healed from. You know, I never spoke about it to nobody. I never got to heal from that. It's just as serious as anything else. You know, this is not something that you just bury or you push to the side like, uh, nobody wants to hear that or it's not that serious and you know, you lucky, you lucky your baby survived and you lucky that your baby's alive. No, your, your situation is just that serious, you know? Thank God that our baby is alive and thank God we, we all made it through. But it's just as serious as anything else. I could just imagine all the NICU moms out there who suffer, who suffered, and who are suffering right now. Um, I just want you to know that you're not alone. You're not alone. I've been there, and it took me a long time to actually really speak about it and to even feel that it was important to talk about. It's crazy that I even felt that way. I deal with so much. I do my best to not lean on my own understanding, but to lean on God. So a lot of my battles are fought differently now, thank God, because if I was to lean on my own understanding, I'll be a mess, you know what I mean? But anyway guys, so I'm gonna end this video right here. If you can relate to this video in any kind of way, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. I wanna hear your stories. You could leave it in the comment section below or you could send me a DM on Instagram and we could talk and I would love to hear it because you're not alone. You're not alone and I'm just, I feel so good right now and I'm just so happy that I was able to talk about this and yeah so i'm gonna leave that right here i love you guys so much thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being on this journey with us don't forget to like comment share subscribe all that good stuff if you want a chance to be featured in our next video don't forget to hashtag png hashtag the mitchells again that's hashtag png hashtag the mitchells and i'll see you guys in the next episode baby girl you the one i adore you love bring me serenity Every night I pray before I sleep Because I found you No, no, God, I do this for real Can't tell you the ways you made me feel I wanna love you for life, my future, my wife You leaving, I'ma miss you, my loving ain't an issue You rockin' with a Mitchell